Frank and I canoed a section of the Wild Hay River that runs through the Wild Hay Glacial Cascades Natural Area, which is a protected area in West Central Alberta. Access to the river is limited by the park, meaning that put-in and take-out spots are limited, but it also means less people, less quads, and a more remote setting. We planned to do the trip in two days over a weekend, which was pretty ambitious because we had about 60 kilometers of river to paddle and we wanted to do a lot of fishing. By the time we put a vehicle at our takeout and then got all our gear packed in the canoe and put in, it was about 8.30. And off we went. We struggled with two things throughout the day. The first was where to stop and fish. To begin with, we stopped at way too many marginal holes, but as the day went on, we had to really pick and choose where we wanted to stop and fish, because we also had a lot of kilometers to paddle. The second thing we struggled with was low water. Like most places in BC and Alberta, the summer was hot and dry, resulting in really low water levels. We probably had to drag the canoe for like many kilometers over the two days that we had on the river. And by we, I mean mostly Frank. He dragged the canoe and me. It was like a sea anchor. Good for slowing us down, but not for much else. gonna go for another run. We fished dry flies almost the whole trip with only a little bit of nymphing under an indicator and a little bit of euro nymphing. Any fly that floated high and dry seemed to work pretty good. Biggest fish of the day, Frank. Yeah. Look at it! Look at this fish! It's beautiful! It's got a split dorsal fin. I guess the only good thing about low water is that you can park your boat in the middle of the river. I 
had seen this fish rising like six inches from the log on the other side of the river. And on the last couple of casts, I drifted my fly a couple of feet from the log, but on this cast, I finally had it right beside it. And I got a take. This hole was one of the biggest that we fished on the trip and we probably landed at least 15 fish here between the two of us. We even managed to land a double hitter here. Oh yeah, <laughs> you called it. Every once in a while I would try skittering my caddis fly along the top of the water against the current. And sometimes this would result in really aggressive takes, which was pretty cool when it happened. Rainbow. Things were going pretty good, although we definitely knew we needed to paddle more and fish less. But it's just not as easy as it sounds when you're passing one beautiful hole after another. But at about 5 o'clock, this happened. It's all fun and games until you get to this. And then the river keeps going over there. It took us about an hour to portage all our gear around the log jam, and from there we pretty much paddled non-stop till about 8.30 in the evening. As it was, we were still less than halfway to the takeout spot when we stopped to set up camp. But when we finally did stop and set up camp, boy did we ever pick a pretty spot. Pringo! <laughs> This is a really well organized. <laughs> Looks like a bomb went off. That's mostly me. I brought six Gatorades. <laughs> I haven't had one of them yet. I had one Coke all day and some goodies. <laughs> and probably like burned about 5,000 calories. <laughs> On 
On day two, we were on the river by 7.30, as we still had more than half the distance to paddle. We started off fishing at Promising Holes, but by about noon, we'd stop fishing altogether and we were just paddling to make sure we made the takeout before dark, or at least before our wives got too worried. As we moved downstream, the river picked up volume and we had to walk a lot less, which really helped us with our speed. We also ran into a lot more large and deep holes, which we really wish we had time to fish. Well, here we are, the end of the journey. 60 kilometers of paddling in two days. Gonna need a week to recover. <laughs>